Hey guys, this is our first summary video about what we covered in lecture this week. I intend to try to post these at the end of every week to cover what we did in the lectures on the previous Tuesday and Thursday. And usually they'll be about, say, five to ten minutes. If we covered particularly complex topics, they may be split into two, possibly three videos. But the point is, I'm just trying to cover all the, the main points that we talked about in the previous week. So, this week, well, just on Tuesday, we talked about statistics and we talked about some different aspects of statistics. The first thing is the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. With statistics, usually we grab a sample of people that we think is representative of a population. For example, I may be interested in the population of the IU student body. And if I want to know something about them, like their attitudes about tuition rates or football, anything like that, I can take a small sample that's representative of the entire population. And then, based on that, I can infer some characteristics of the population that they came from. That process is called inferential statistics. And when we calculate numbers just about the sample that we've collected, we call that descriptive statistics. Another aspect about statistics we talked about is the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. Data are just observations that we collect from our sample. If it's qualitative, there's no number, there's no numerical information associated with it. Qualitative, in other words, refers to things like feelings, subjective experiences. I may be very interested about something, I may like something a lot or dislike it a lot, but that doesn't give you any numerical information. That's qualitative. Quantitative does give you numerical information. It could be something like observing somebody's height or their weight, writing it down. That has a number associated with it, and that's typically what we use when we carry out statistics. Now, when we gather this data, it can be either discrete or it can be continuous. Continuous uh, can be a little bit hard to describe, but think of it as can you break it down into infinitely small intervals and would that make sense? A good example of this is something like distance. So if I take a ruler here and I go from 17 inches to 18 inches, I can traverse an infinite number of smaller intervals as I go towards that 18. I could cover 17.00001 inches, then 17.0002 inches, and I could even break it down smaller than that. But the point is I cover an infinite number of smaller intervals when I go from one data point to the next. Other examples could be things like height and weight. As you grow from, say, 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 8, you're traversing an infinite number of smaller intervals of height. With discrete, there is no smaller interval that you can break it down into as you go from one number to the next. Think, for example, the number of children in the family. You can have one kid in the family, you can have two children in the family, three children, but as you go from one child to two child to two, two, two children to three children, you don't traverse, say, 1.5 kids. It just doesn't make sense. So if you can't break it down into smaller intervals, then it's usually a discrete variable. If it can just be described only in whole numbers, it's usually a discrete variable. Think about the number of, say, computers that you own or the number of books that you own. Those are usually only described in whole numbers, and those are discrete data. We also talked about levels of measurement, and the three that we discussed were nominal, rank order, and equal interval. Nominal is the easiest of the three to describe. It merely is categorical information. So for example, assigning a label to somebody about their gender, their nationality, their city of origin, uh, their hair color, eye color, those are all labels that we can assign to somebody. Okay, they're observations, but they're nominal. They just have a name associated with them. No quantitative information. With rank order, we can actually rank different pieces of data relative to each other. So think about ranking people from tallest to shortest in the class. They all have different heights associated with them, but as I go from, say, the shortest individual to the next shortest inter individual using the rank order system, you don't have any sense of how much height difference there is between them. We've merely ranked one as higher or taller than the other. Equal interval is typically what we use the most in statistics. 
And those refer to the fact that as we go from one unit to another unit of measurement, whether it be height or weight or temperature, each of those distances is the same as any other difference. As the temperature increases from one to two degrees, that is the same as increasing from a temperature of 100 degrees to 101 degrees. It's the same interval of just one degree. Now within equal interval, we have something called a ratio. If the scale has an absolute zero point, then it's a ratio equal interval scale. Think about height, for example. Does it make sense to go below a height of zero? Probably not. So in that case, there is an absolute zero point. We can't have negative height. We can't go below that absolute zero point. So the very last thing we talked about was independence versus dependence. This is getting into an aspect of experimental design, which we'll touch on later, but I just want to introduce some concepts now so that they're starting to be planted in your mind. Independence refers to the fact that we have something that we can control as the experimenter. I may divide my class into two groups, and I may give one group of the class uh, a certain performance-enhancing drug for their exams, and the other half of the class a placebo or say nothing at all. Either assigning the drug or something else, that's an independent variable. I have control over it as an experimenter deciding who to assign it to. The dependent variable is what I measure. In this case, it could be performance on an exam. And so that's a result of having changed my independent variable, I measure the dependent variable as some sort of outcome, something that gets changed as a result of assigning somebody an independent variable or not. So that's a brief summary about what we talked about. I hope this helps to clarify some of what we discussed. And next week we'll start to discuss frequency histograms and plotting data that we collect.